almost all Australian citizens in there to just give the Uluru statement from the heart, improves the welfare and the lives of the Indigenous Australians, which it does. We support it in Parliament and we would assist it in bringing it about. Thank you. Um, of course, we support the Uluru statement from the heart uh, in full. Um, we also support justice reinvestment, extra investment in remote Indigenous housing, uh, closing the gap. Um, in my own portfolio, we've committed to uh, teaching First Nations languages in our schools, um, protections for uh, intellectual property, for uh, Aboriginal um, art and culture, and a bunch of other stuff that I'm running out of time to talk about. <laughs> are rented, yet 50% of voters rent. Rents are arising. At the moment, we have a system that protects landlords. When are you going to give tenants protection and security and rent control? You might say that this is a state issue. It's a federal issue. It, could, it affects all Australians, or half of Australians. All this talk about building housing, apparently one in 20 high-rise apartments in Sydney is vacant. They're investments, they're not homes. Uh, will you introduce a vacancies tax? And while I'm at it, are you going to increase the doll? <laughs>
uh, since the last, in, in the last couple of months. And they've had to move, they've had to find somewhere else to live. It's frankly unacceptable. I don't think it's a state issue. I think what we need is a national, uh, uh, um, sorry, a national um, uh, set of standards for tenants' rights. And it needs to include no more, uh, no grounds evictions. It shouldn't be the case that uh, if, you, if you're on a rolling lease, uh, the landlord can decide at any moment that it's time for you to leave your home, uh, for you to pack up your things, take your family, uh, and head off somewhere else. Uh, we need to have caps on rent increases. We can't have this situation where people go from being quite comfortable where they are, they're earning a decent wage, uh, to suddenly finding that actually the landlord wants to make a little bit more money out of this, uh, so they're gonna jack the rents up by 200 bucks and put you out on your ass. Sorry for the language. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it is unacceptable and it is something that we need a national strategy to make sure that um, the system actually works for people and treats tenants like human beings rather than second class citizens. Um, and you, you were saying before about uh, the plans to build housing, it isn't just for, for homeowners. For us, public housing is a critical part of any uh, housing provision in this country. Uh, the market itself is simply not working. It's not working for people who are up to their eyeballs in debt and it's not working for tenants either who are constantly struggling to, to get by. Um, so it's really critically important that we have uh, a strong back, uh, that we have a strong amount of, a large amount of public housing so that people never feel like they're at risk of homelessness. They never feel like they're gonna, you know, find themselves on the street or anything like that. Um, and we also want for public housing to be more desirable than the private market. We want more investment in that area. Stop treating it like an afterthought. Stop treating it like uh, something that uh, I believe the former Prime Minister referred to as a place for the deserving poor, but rather something for everyone uh, and something that people want to, to be a part of. Um, sorry, just on your last question around um, uh, do we uh, do we want to raise the rate? Absolutely, we want a universal livable income, $88 a day for all uh, assembly payments. <laughs> starting to work on um, in government because the truth is uh, many Australians will be renting in some
some cases for many years or their whole lives. And uh, having that sort of insecurity where you've got short-term rent, uh, rental um, agreements and you can be kicked out very easily, that's not in anyone's interest. We do have to have um, more certainty and um, longer leases. And the other thing uh, we really do need to do, I think, is build up, um, I, I agree we need to invest more in social housing. As I said, I think I've, I've built more housing than any housing minister since the Second World War. I'm a supporter of public housing. But um, I'm also very proud of the reforms we made to our community housing organisations because they have been able to build and expand using the National Rental Affordability Scheme programs and others. And I think that um, ability for community housing to um, serve a group of people uh, who are, for example, key workers who you know, are, are actually on an okay income, except they can't afford to live close to where they work because housing rents are so crazy. What about the level, everybody would apply for But if everybody could apply for public housing, we've got 27 million people in the country, and even with a, a million that we're proposing to build, um, that would be hard. $400 so, was given to the two districts. So, in, in any case, I, I'm, I'm saying that I agree with you on the fact that we do need rental, re, uh, rental reforms and more certainty uh, for renters. Um, and uh, I think at every budget, we should be looking to see what more we can do for people uh, in most need in our community. It was the Labor Party that saw the biggest pension